are three core types of sites. There is the type of site that is what's called on an island by itself. It's out in the middle of nowhere. You see them all the time. You'll be driving along, and all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, the business marketplace is all over here, and you'll see a restaurant. Here's the roads going. You'll see a restaurant. And there will be a, another marketplace down here 10, 12 miles, another marketplace down here 5 miles, and you'll see a restaurant. Oh, God, I'll say, I'm not making any money. I can't get anything happening. Not enough people stop. Well, you're out on an island by yourself. You've placed yourself in the middle of absolutely nowhere by yourself. You better have a huge number of marketing dollars to get enough business to be on an island by yourself. Okay? Second type of site is a captive audience. A captive audience is the type of site where when you go to a baseball game, there's a restaurant inside the baseball stadium. You go to a mall, there's a restaurant inside the mall. You go to an office tower, there's a restaurant inside the office tower. The reason we call it a captive audience is for the most part, if the person's not going to that particular establishment to either watch the baseball game or to go to the museum, or to go to the mall, if they're not going to that particular establishment, you're not going to get their business. That is a captive audience. They're going for something else, and you're there to feed them, which is perfectly fine, but you've got to understand it's a different type of business model. You're changing the day parts that you can get business in. The third, and we all know the third, we may not know, realize what it is, but it's called restaurant rub. Well, in most businesses, you think that you're best off being away from your competitors. In the restaurant business, you're best off sitting right next to them. Why? Because if I have restaurant row, and let's say this is a street, and I have a restaurant here, restaurant, restaurant, retail establishment, restaurant, restaurant, retail establishment, restaurant, restaurant, The mammal is already trained to go to restaurant row. These restaurants are all spending marketing dollars to get people to come to restaurant row. Well, so I don't have to spend as much marketing dollars because I'm getting the benefit of us all sitting on restaurant row and us all getting restaurant business and sometimes they will buy pizza, sometimes they will buy burgers, sometimes they'll buy Italian food, sometimes they'll buy chicken, sometimes they'll buy Mexican food. Also, I get the benefit of Restaurant Row. Now, Restaurant Row is expensive. It costs more money to be on Restaurant Row. But I'm going to make more money from it. I'm going to spend less marketing dollars. I'm going to get more sales. I'm going to have more access to employees and management. I'm going to have better likelihood of having people drive along, see my business that wouldn't have otherwise if I'm out on an island by myself. If I'm out on an island by myself, I'm going to have to train you to come to my business. And I'm going to get no residual benefits from anybody sitting next to me and you going to them and then deciding, you know what, next time I want to go over to Howard's place. It's not going to happen because you're out on an island by yourself. In the case of a captive audience, I have to rely on that mall or that baseball stadium being full. If it's not full with people, I'm not going to sell food. Now, virtually every site you think of falls into one of the three. Let's say you're driving along an interstate. And you're driving along, and all of a sudden you see on the interstate, there's the sign that says XYZ restaurant, this exit. Okay, That is a combination of usually restaurant row, because it's usually not one restaurant sitting there. It's three or four or five restaurants sitting there. So it's a combination of restaurant row and a captive audience. Because believe it or not, the captive audience is if you're not driving along that interstate, you're not controlled within that marketplace. Now, 
for the good interstate locations, they usually have the interstate and they have the exit. And you have the restaurants all sitting here. And you have a little town over here of some kind. Well, so I can get them from coming this way when they're leaving the town, and I can get them this way on the interstate. But for the most part, again, that's restaurant row. If you go to the interstate locations and it's a single unit sitting there by itself, usually not doing very much business. Because the core of that site is really focused on a pile of restaurants sitting there. And when you're driving along, you know they're coming, and it gives you choices. Does that make sense as it comes to site selection? That is actually the art of looking at a site. you got to be able to take a map from way up in the sky, take the blown up pictures, lay them out, and really plot what's happening in the marketplace. And when you do it, what you're going to see is it's going to scream to you whether or not it's reasonable for you to get the volume of traffic you would need to operate a restaurant. I don't know if you know this, but one of the largest real estate holders in the country for restaurant real estate is McDonald's. What McDonald's has done is they buy a patch of ground and they lease it to their competitors. Why would they do that? Well, because number one, McDonald's is really smart. Because what they know is they know the more they allow Restaurant Row to be around them, they're going to benefit from Restaurant Row two ways. One is I'm going to have more people stop in because there's more restaurants here, and I'm going to get my share of business. And number two, I'm going to charge my competitors either straight rent or percentage rent to build their restaurants on my dirt. They're making money two ways. One of the other largest holders of restaurant real estate, Walmart. Walmart buys a big piece of dirt, and they'll do outbuildings. There'll be some restaurants. Why do they do that? Well, because by having food here, I'm building restaurant row. What's that do? It drives people to my facility. I'm making money two ways. I'm selling them my goods, and I'm charging either rent or percentage rent to restaurant row sitting right around me. Walmart's pretty smart. I wonder if that's why these are two of the biggest, most successful companies in America and in the world. They're very smart.